Well, now for our penultimate award, the International Journalist of the Year. Now, this is for an established journalist or filmmaker who has made the most outstanding contribution to international journalism across the last 12 months. The nominees are... Fergal Keane, BBC News. As BBC foreign correspondent, Fergal's career spans decades, covering difficult stories around the world with humanity and insight. From interviewing Aung San Suu Kyi in Myanmar to the Central African Republic, Zimbabwe or the Democratic Republic of Congo, his global coverage has offered rare and unique access to underreported stories and hard-to-reach places. The scandal began in late 2013 at this refugee camp, an airport runway, where French peacekeepers protected thousands of people and their children from violence between rival militias. They and the UN helped to prevent genocide. But some are accused of becoming sexual predators. After the rape, he was crying and afraid. But the soldier reassured him and said not to mention the rape to anyone. Their son was 13. They allege the soldier then threatened to stab him if he reported the rape. Nima Elberger, CNN International. As CNN's senior international correspondent, Nima works tirelessly to expose the darkest corners of inhumanity in the world. From Africa to the Middle East and beyond, she examines grim events that would otherwise go unnoticed. This year, Nima and her team uncovered evidence of an active slave trade in Libya, prompting global reaction and, most importantly, action. We ask if we can speak to the men, the auctioneer, seen here. Refuses. We ask again if we can speak to them, if we can help them. No, he says. The auctions are over, we're told. And we're asked to leave. That was over very quickly. We walked in, and as soon as we walked in, the men started covering their faces, but they clearly wanted to finish what they were doing and they kept bringing out what they kept referring to in Arabic as al budar the merchandise. All in all, they admitted to us that there were 12 Nigerians that were sold in front of us. And I, I honestly don't know what to say. That was probably one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. Walon and KCO Reuters. Walon and KCO were also jointly nominated for the New Voice Award. In October, in Din locals pointed two Reuters reporters toward an area of brush behind the hill where they said the killings took place. They discovered a newly cut trail leading to soft, recently disturbed earth littered with bones. Some of the bones were entangled with scraps of clothing and string that appeared to match the cord that is seen binding the captives' wrists in the photographs. A Rakhine Buddhist elder provided reporters with a photograph, which shows the aftermath of the execution. Abdul Malik, the Islamic teacher, appears to have been beheaded. Abulu, the student, has a gaping wound in his neck. My husband is dead, said the wife of one of the men. I want justice for his death. The Buddhist elder explained why he chose to share evidence of the killings with Reuters. I want to be transparent on this case. I don't want it to happen like that in the future. Well, to present this award, please welcome to the stage writer, editor and commentator and this year's chair of the jury, Raymond Whitaker. Well, it was a privilege to be asked to chair the judging panel for this award, although I certainly can't say that it was easy uh, judging TV reports against print, against news agency reports. I think the best reporting always stands out uh, because it tells us about people who live very differently from the way we do. Um, it deals with issues very different from the ones that often transfix us and our media where we live. Uh, we haven't heard a word tonight, for example, about Brexit or Donald Trump's latest tweet. 
and it's all the better for that. Um, to win this award, journalists have to take us to often unreported corners of the world. And even though journalism has changed imme immeasurably since I started as a journalist, I think the basics remain the same. The best reporting takes us uh, to where people do not want us to go. Uh, it gives us the truth. Um, it reports all sides. Um, and this year's winners, I think, I've probably given the game away, um, definitely did that. Uh, the reporter from all sides had the guts to go to a very dangerous place, and they're suffering as a result. So this year's winners are Wallon and Chosa U of Reuters. Obviously, they can't be here. Well, um, thank you to the judges for, for choosing the, this entry. This, this means a lot, and it'll mean a lot to Wallo and Ake, so oh, we'll get the news to them as soon as we can. Um, they were detained in December um, during the reporting of, of the story about the killings of 10 men and boys in this village in, West, in Rakhine State in Myanmar. Um, and since January, they've been undergoing court hearings to decide whether or not they will be charged under the, British, um, the sort of colonial era uh, Official Secrets Act, which um, they, could, they could be jailed for 14 years if, if the case um, goes right the way through the courts. Um, so um, they, they're, they're good men doing a, a good job of balanced and fair reporting from a part of the world that um, is dangerous. Um, and uh, they and we at Reuters appreciate all the, all the kind of support we've had both internationally and from inside Myanmar too. So thank you again. <laughs>